Let me tell you about Jasmine. Jasmine is a private equity investment advisor. She sells private equity. So every year she has an amazing RSP season. So you guys are probably familiar with this. RSP season really starts in about mid-January and goes until the end of February. And for a lot of investment advisors, this is a really busy time of year. So for Jasmine, this is her time. This is when she really shines. Every RSP season and basically in that one and a half months, she brings in $300,000 approximately. Every year she brings in about $300,000 during RSP season. And she is so elated that she goes through the RSP season and just assumes that everything is going to be exactly like this through the whole year. She imagines herself every month to two months pulling in $300,000. So she figures she'll make between one and $1.5 million during the year. So what she does is she gets this great start to the year. That first month and a half, she pulls in the $300,000 and she decides, hey, it's March, RSP season's over. I'm gonna go down south for a while. So she goes to Thailand or she goes to Mexico or Hawaii and she just has the time of her life. She has a great time when she's down there. And then she's still feeling pretty good when she comes back. She feels, oh, I could just take some time. I could enjoy the summer. So she enjoys her summer too and decides in the fall she'll really get back to it, make another $300,000 and she'll be fine. But what happens is she gets back in the fall and she ends up making maybe twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars, and then we get into the winter time, and especially Christmas. So Christmas for investment advisors and a lot of people in the financial industry is a really slow time of year. So she essentially got that three hundred thousand dollars at the beginning of the year. And really, she spent all that money over the summer. And then she had a little bit of money that just kind of ticked her through the fall. Now she's got two months. She's got November and December where she spent all her money and she doesn't really have much money coming in anymore. She's pretty well got nothing coming in. So... Here she is, the 1st of November, looking at the next few months, knowing that no more money really is going to come in. She doesn't have anything that is in the pipeline that's going to pay her out before the end of the year. So she is absolutely destitute for the end of the year. She doesn't have any money. So she thinks about it for a while and she thinks every single year I get to about November and I've got absolutely nothing. It's completely unacceptable. She feels like a failure. She feels dejected. She feels like she really doesn't know what she's doing. She feels confused. She feels angry. She feels depressed. So she's really got herself into a, a real bad situation by the time November and December comes around. Because of her finances, she's pretty depressed at that point of the year. So what she would really like is she would really like some way to distribute that 300000 Over the year, she made maybe $360,000. She would really like some way to distribute that. She could have had $30,000. Could she? Yes, $30,000 a month. If that money had just been distributed, which is pretty good. That's a pretty easy amount of money to live on, especially when you compare it to the zero 
and the begging and borrowing and stealing from her family and friends that she's doing in November and December. <clears throat> so why is that? Why does she end up in this kind of conundrum when it comes to the end of the year? Well, really, uh, she is to blame, of course. She should kind of put everything in place that she needs to. Um, but that aside, is there a way that she could have had a better setup? Is there a way that she could have been in a winning situation from the beginning? So obviously she wasn't in a winning situation. And why was that? Well, because all her money was in cash. So cash is very highly liquid. Anytime you need cash, just run your credit card, pay it off, go to an ATM. It's very, very easy to have access to all this cash. So she thinks to herself, well, is there a way that I can provide myself less access? Because I know I'm going to spend it. Is there a way that I can put some external constraints on myself really to add that discipline into my life that I don't feel like I've got right now? And she thinks of her private equity. Well, what if I were to buy some private equity investments? So the issue with private equity is that she might put the money in. It might be an investment. Generally speaking, they're anywhere from three to five year hold on the private equity investment. But that money could get tied up almost indefinitely, 10, 15 years. So that is great. It's illiquid. And she knows that she is not going to access that money. But the problem is come December and November, November and December, she's still not going to have access to that money. So it's not going to solve her short term problem that she's always accessing that money too quickly and running out of it. Because this she can't access at all. So it's not going to provide her any anything in those months where she doesn't have any money and which she might not be able to access it for a long, long time, right? So it's kind of like a Goldilocks situation. This bed was too soft and this bed was too hard. This cash was too liquid and this private equity was too illiquid. So what could she do? Well, really, um, now that we're bringing up the Goldilocks, she needs a Goldilocks investment. So she needs to find a store of value that's not too liquid that she spends it all and not so illiquid that she just has absolutely no access to it when she needs it. So she needs that middle ground between a liquid investment and an illiquid investment. So of course she needs a partially liquid investment. Yeah, and just to get back to the private equity too, really, even if you wanted to borrow against that at some point, you would probably have a tough time with the banks putting up collateral of private equity to be able to pull out that money when she needs it in November and December. So she needs to find a partially liquid investment. And those things do exist. Again, I can't really speak too specifically to anybody's personal financial situation because I don't know the details, but I'm happy to talk to you about it if you give me a call and we'll talk to you tomorrow.